Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for watching this video. I've gotten a question about which JavaScript framework I, I prefer, um, Angular or React. And for all the naysayers out there, I mean, I know that comparing Angular to React is not an apples to apples comparison. It's more of an apples to oranges comparison. Um, there's, there's differences between the two. Um, both have kind of their own opinionated uh, way of being able to accomplish uh, certain things. Now, Angular kind of aims at being the full-scale web framework, kind of like a, a Django or ASP, you know, it's all JavaScript. Um, and they have, you know, very Angular-specific ways of, of being able to do everything from routing um, to data access and data binding and stuff like that. Uh, while React basically says, hey, you can use whatever sort of stack you want. I'm going to stay out of the way of the, all that. Um, you just need to go ahead and build some components using, you know, our philosophy, our design philosophy of reusable web components. And then you can apply our framework to whatever sort of back end that you want, whether it's Django or ASP or um, Ruby on Rails. Now, when you compare the two about which one is more opinionated, while they're both opinionated, uh, React is certainly the uh, easier approach when you're trying to integrate uh, a website um, or you're trying to integrate one of these two frameworks into the website stack that, that you happen to choose. So uh, React pretty much works with everything. Angular sometimes um, can cause a, a few headaches when it comes to actually getting it implemented. Uh, namely, when I tried to use Angular with, with Django, um, while you can use the two pretty, I mean, I wouldn't say that easily, but the bottom line is that uh, React is certainly easier to integrate into both uh, React, uh, to Django and um, ASP, I would say, um, by a long shot. Once again, it's not exactly a fair comparison just because um, React is handling more of the view where Angular is trying to handle everything, the MVC aspect of web design or web development. Now, a lot of uh, JavaScript people, I mean, people that may try to promote Aurelia or um, maybe Ember or Backbone or Underscore or any of these other millions of libraries that we have out there in, in JavaScript communities. Um, I think a lot of people would say that both of them are bloated. And, um, you know, a lot of people, I would, I would think, have a problem with how Angular handles template data binding. It's, it's, it's rather ugly, I think, um, the way... Now, Angular 2.0 may have made some improvements with that. I haven't really spent too much time with Angular 2.0, but um, I absolutely hated its, uh, its templating language uh, for Angular 1.0. Um, now, with React, a uh, lot of criticism is, is thrown React's way with its uh, JSX uh, language that it has, and JSX is really just a form of JavaScript that, that compiles to regular JavaScript that builds uh, HTML, essentially. So... Um, a lot of people think it's really ugly that, you know, we have this JSX where we're kind of combining this JavaScript and HTML into one, uh, making this, you know, soupy mess of a, um, of a language. And a lot of people like to separate their concerns, and they, they criticize React for that. Um, actually, personally, it took me three separate attempts where I said, you know what, I, I'm going to give React a shot. Uh, and, and for the first two attempts, I looked at JSX, and I started messing with JSX, and I said, oh, the hell with this, I don't like it. Uh, and ended up, you know, trying to write re React with raw JavaScript and um, eventually kind of saw the light and started using JSX. And eventually it started growing on me and I realized that I would much rather write uh, React code using JSX than not using JSX. So um, it is weird, though. There are some weird, um, you know, gotchas with, with that and um, certainly some criticisms uh, towards React with uh, the JSX library and it being somewhat messy. Both websites are heavily used in production. React has actually been used by the Facebook guys since about 2011. So, I mean, Facebook is certainly a large-scale website that has, has scaled with the best of them. And um, a lot of there, there has been some misconception about whether or not Google actually backs Angular. Um, the the fact of the matter is, is that Google does use Angular. It's one of their more popular projects. And um, several websites, including the uh, YouTube gaming uh, website, is, is created with Angular. So um, it is untrue if somebody says that Angular doesn't actually use, uh, or Google doesn't actually use Angular. It's not, it's not true. They absolutely do. Um, so both of the frameworks are actually sponsored and used by major corporations. 
Now, one of the um, concerns that people had with Angular is that Angular from the 1.3 version, which is the last stable version of the 1 series, to where they went to the 2.0 series, they um, they had initially implemented a completely new design where it really Angular 2.0 wasn't going to resemble one uh, the 1 series at all, and a lot of people were very concerned about that. Corporations spent millions implementing Angular, and they thought that you know, it would stick around for a while. And um, the hotness that is Angular has been fading over the last uh, year and a half or some or, or so. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, switched over to this framework or that framework, and, and React has actually taken some of that thunder. Um, although, as far as JavaScript frameworks are concerned, as uh, as far as new frameworks are concerned, um, Angular still is is way more popular than React. But um, people were concerned because Angular um, is you know supposed to be this Google's. Uh, you know, brainchild is you know that's sponsored by Google, but they also had this Polymer project, which was uh, released um, just to production earlier uh, in 2015. Um, hasn't really seen a whole lot of adoption, um, although they are using this for a few sites. But Polymer's approach is different from Angular in that Polymer is trying to build the entire web out of reusable components. They feel that you know the component-based system of building a you know f dynamic, fluid UI is is the way to go uh, to have you know isolated chunks and, and for a long time we, we you know we've seen that with the MVC pattern um, with something like Django where it's all module based you know what I mean so everything is isolated it's easier to unit test and um, polymer tries to fill that gap a lot of browsers don't support it though so in order for poly, you know so mainly polymer is like a polyfill in order to be able to, to support something called the shadow Dom where entire components can have encapsulated meaning enclosed inside of it um, CSS and JavaScript that doesn't interfere with other components um, that have their own CSS or JavaScript or images or whatever it may be. Um, so people were concerned that Polymer might be trying to knock off Angular, and um, and for the most part, it kind of it kind of is. I mean, it, there's going to be um, you know, Polymer can work with Angular, but Polymer is kind of a different direction for Google. Uh, and when we when we talk about web components, and if Google thinks that that is the direction in the future, well, React has already kind of seen that. With, you know, with the Facebook guys, they've already kind of seen that, and they've already done that with React. And React, although they they're not using the Shadow DOM thing, they they're using something called a Virtual DOM. It's still kind of the same philosophy, and it's something that they've already been using for several years now. So, um, you know, a lot of people saw that as a major plus towards React, um, being that Facebook is already kind of envisioned um, what Angular didn't see, you know, several years ago, um, and what Google didn't see several years ago, which has now, um, you know, prompted them to create the, the Polymer project and also to kind of redesign Angular from the ground up. Um, so, so React kind of, um, it does a lot of things right that these other frameworks are envious of, including um, Ember, which has recently designed their, uh, their view system to um, better reflect um, React, and, and they try to tout now that they're actually faster than React. But um, React is more than just speed. It's also, a, you know, like a, an opinionated design philosophy for building reusable chunks of code, which are components. And if you want to compare a component, it would be very similar to something like a jQuery plugin, where the jQuery plugin, you add a, a script, and maybe you have to have, like, you know, four or five dependency scripts and stuff like that. And then you have images that that uh, plugin, you know, relies upon, including CSS and maybe fonts and you know, icons and all this crazy stuff. So you end up getting, you know, some. There's some, you know, really sloppy plugins out there in jQuery. Like if you're using a photo viewer, you have to bring in like, you know, 15 files and stuff like that, and then you have to instantiate and and do all kinds of, you know, work to get it to to actually work right. And even then. Um, there can still be problems, and it can conflict with other plugins and stuff like that. So this whole component-based system is supposed to be doing away with that sloppy way of building websites that we were so accustomed to over the last, um, you know, really since the birth of jQuery. Now, when it comes to learning curve, uh, React most certainly has Angular beat um, by a long shot. Granted, um, React is just handling the view portion of the MVC pattern while Angular is trying to tackle all of it. Uh, you can get up and running in React no matter what your stack is in a matter of um, you know hours or maybe you know days if you really want to um, you know get going uh, pretty proficiently and if you want to be like you know expert level um, you probably be good to go after just several months of using React while Angular is a lot more compu complicated, a lot more opinionated and tries to do a whole lot more for you so there's quite a bit more to learn um, when you compare React to Angular.
a lot of the negative publicity surrounding Angular 2.0 um, is a little bit um, taken out of context, considering the fact that uh, Angular 2 is still under heavy development, and um, and they they're constantly um, changing their direction. But um, out of the gate, when Angular 2 was announced, like there was a lot of people jumping off the bandwagon. Um, before anything was even finalized. So there was a lot of bickering and arguing within the community. In fact, one of the uh, core developers ended up leaving and starting the Euralia project, which is a, a now a competing project with Angular 2. So um, the JavaScript framework war is at an all-time high leading into 2016. And to be honest with you, it's kind of rubbing people the wrong way. It's getting a little bit old at this point. Um, even at places where I've worked, um, I've seen um, competing frameworks like nobody nobody knows what to choose because you know the, the war is is just ongoing i mean you have you, you don't even know if google's really backing angular or not and what their plans are the future um and you don't even know you know how long these core members of the angular team are going to be there um just so many different competing uh, um venues in, in the javascript arena that it's just it's mind-boggling at this point now once again i can't um express this enough. Um, Angular cannot be specifically compared to React because um, be, React is more of a library as in, you know, as, jo as jQuery is a, a JavaScript library for accomplishing, you know, certain things. Um, so React can be thought of as a library while Angular is an entire web framework. So they're, 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 they're very different in that regard. But uh, what React does, Angular also tries to do, and I think that React um, is just, it does that portion of what Angular tries to do as far as handling the view better. And I think there's no question about that. But the, the question really, it, it comes up where it's like, okay, if I do want to do an entire Angular web framework, should I try to mix React into Angular? Probably not. I mean, Angular is big enough on its own for, for users to have to download and run in their client browser. Um, so, you know, you, you pretty much have to, to make the decision. If I'm going to go with Angular, I'm probably going to stick with Angular's templating and view system and, and not try to, to add a bunch of complexity there because there's going to be enough complexity already out of the box. So really, that's it. That's my opinion. Um, I think Angular is okay. I've done Angular. I've, I've integrated in, into Django, and, um, yeah, I thought that was fine. I liked the fact that uh, React kind of uh, gets out of the way of my design decisions, whether I, whether or not I want to use Node or Django or ASP. Um, and for that reason, because it's a library, I just have to include the file. Um, I just found it to be much easier to work with. And um, I do plan on getting back into Angular 2.0 once it is uh, finalized and released, and um, I'm curious to see how that goes. I think there are a lot of corporations that are still already invested in Angular, and some of them ha are kicking themselves now. Um, some people are jumping off of it, but uh, you know there are you know quite a bit of jobs out there in, in the Angular field, and um, there was such an explosion of growth that Angular is not going anywhere anytime soon, even with the 2.0 version that conflicts with the 1.0. So. Whether you choose Angular or React, it's completely up to you. I would go with React, and um, if you do go with uh, with Angular, I don't think it's a terrible decision or anything. So uh, it's just my opinion, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye.